Welcome back everyone to the third episode of my journey into making comics and today we are going to be discussing the creation process of comics itself. Now before I get started I want to say that there are many different ways of creating comics. Uh, I'm just going to show you like a generalized version of making comics. You can make simple like uh, like like a strip and that's a comic okay so a strip with just a few panels is also a comic. And I'll cover that a little bit as well, but I'm also going to cover the process of making comics as if you were to, for example, make a web comic that is continuous, or um, let's say uh, if after that process you wanted to turn it into an actual uh, published work, you know, that's physically printed that you can hold in your hands, that I'm also going to be discussing now. However, uh, I do want to say that this, considering this creation process is so long, and there's a lot of info to go through, uh, I'm going to summarize it in this episode and then in the following five episodes uh, I'm going to tackle each individual phase uh, that I have basically like called them. So there's five phases uh, that I consider uh, you know the pillars of uh, creating comics and these phases are the um, conceptual phase, the development phase, the pre-production phase, the production phase, and the distribution phase, which includes marketing and such. So um, again, this is none of this is written in stone, but um, you'll notice that, you know, as we go through this, you'll notice that there's a lot of logic in it. And it's also something that is actually used quite across the production board, like when you work on films or something, because I also do a lot of storyboarding and concept art for films. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm known uh, and familiar with these, um, you know, production pipelines. So also a lot of the stuff that I do uses that same production pipeline uh, to some extent uh, within the creation process of making comics. So right, let's dive right in and let's have a look at um, how I see the process. All right, so the creation process of making comics. So like I said, um, this will very much depend on the type of comic book that you are making, whether it's a comedy project that is only uh, individual strips that get uploaded on like a daily or weekly basis, um, where, for example, the story is not continuous, but are self-contained stories for each individual strip. Uh, or you're going for the longer process of, uh, for example, a continuous story that is spread over a, a certain amount of issues or collectional books or, you know, these are two different processes, but they do kind of follow um, along the lines of what you're about to see. So let's have a look at the very first uh, phase, which I consider the conceptual phase. Uh, this one is followed up by the development phase that is then followed up by the pre-production that is followed up by production and then we finally reach distribution which also contains marketing the conceptual phase the very first step that I did uh, was to find a topic or theme to talk about. Um, so, for example, think about the kind of theme it is. Uh, does it cover serious topics? Does it contain funny elements? Uh, the topics and themes that uh, you choose will they also, you know, will will also kind of dictate the kind of audience that uh, you're targeting for your comic. Uh, this is crucially important. Uh, secondly, there is uh, doing research on the chosen topics and themes. So uh, by this I mean uh, try to obtain as much information on the cover topics um, in order to enrich your content and it also increases the chance of improving your story's quality. Okay, so by this I mean uh, going online, reading books on YouTube, watching documentaries, watching movies, you know, all that kind of stuff. Then there is thinking about the characters who will carry your message. 
So by this, I mean characters are like vessels that carry the information from your research and early concepts into the story. So at this point in time, it's important to think about the kind of characters that can best translate all that research and collected data into a coherent story. Right, then there's organizing your thoughts. Okay, so all that research and character ideas, they need to come together at some point, right? And in order for that, uh, what I've used are mind maps. So uh, these can be, um, you know, like uh, mind maps like software like XMind or iThoughts, uh, just, just mind mapping software in general. This will get the job done just as well. Uh, and why do you do this is because it gives you this overview of the whole process. Then the next step for me was testing the concepts. Okay, so testing your concepts. Uh, with all your concepts now in place, it's time to put them to the test. Uh, this can be done by, for example, writing a summary of your storyline on a single page and condense it down to a single paragraph and eventually a single sentence. So this helps you create clarity and razor sharp focus on the story that you're trying to tell. It's also a great way to test your concepts as it really boils it down to its core message. Uh, does this message carry the weight that you originally had in mind? If so, does it stack up against all the research? If not, now is the time to go back to the drawing board and restructure your thoughts until you get that one liner just right. So I'm gonna move on to the next stage. Uh, which is within the development phase. So you've got all your conceptual stuff done. Then let's start looking at creating a story outline. Okay, so this again um, is based on all the research and mind maps uh, that were created during the conceptual phase. And so you start uh, creating a story outline. This outline takes time to develop and can change over time. There are many different strategies also that you can apply for this. So, you know, this all depends on how you do it. Uh, one of the strategies that I really like is Blake Snyder's Beat Sheet, uh, which also, again, can be found in the book Save the Cat, uh, written by Blake Snyder. And uh, this is a very good and very stable strategy that's used in pretty much almost all of Hollywood screenwriting pieces and translates pretty well to other mediums such as comics. Right, then uh, the second stage of the development phase is dissecting the story into separate scenes. So with a clear vision of the overall storyline, it's crucial to start establishing the scenes within your story. Each and every one of them must have a clear purpose with a before and after contained within them. Uh, if a scene has no actual change in it, then it shouldn't really exist, as it's not really telling a story. So all stories have a beginning, which is generally the opposite of its end. Right, moving on, we've got writing that all-important script. Okay, so I don't know if you've noticed, but we've done a lot before we've even started writing the script. Okay, so it's just to give you an idea of the process. It's, it's actually very long. So this is where you finally get to write the script. All these small details finally start coming into play. You've got all the scenes, so you already know what you're going to do and write. So every scene is written out in detail with dialogue included. And at this moment in time, your characters start coming to life. Right, moving on, we have creating a massive visual library. Okay, so now that you know that your world is all, um, you know, what your world is all about and the kind of characters that you're dealing with, it's important to do some intensive visual research. You know, what could your characters look like? Uh, what about the street that they live on and the vehicles that they drive? Um, what about the time period that your story's told in? You know, what was the fashion like? And if it's a fantasy or a sci-fi story, uh, what could it possibly look like? Right, moving on, we've got establishing a visual art style. Now, this is a massive one. Um, this one actually takes a long time. So this part of the process is unbelievably important as it will dictate your production speed and quality. Finding the right art style is an art form upon itself. And, you know, it, it takes a lot of time. For me, it takes a lot of time. I'm still doing it for immersion uh, and for reset access denied. I really just dived right into it. Uh, and, you know, even I was extremely surprised at how long things took. So it's easy to underestimate the work. Uh, but establishing a visual art style is extremely important because over time you're basically going to know exactly um, how long something takes. And how do I do this? Well, you know, it can be found by, for example, creating individual test panels like I've done for immersion and then test strips and even full blown test pages, which I've all done for immersion. I've been doing it for you know a year and, and more now. Then moving on, we've got uh, storyboarding the script. 
So with a finished script, uh, you want to start testing the story once again. And this is true. Um, you know, does all that written content translate well onto the pages that the reader will eventually get to read? That's a question you have to ask yourself. Uh, you know, the storyboard version of your comic book is unbelievably important. Um, at least to me it is. Um, the reason why is because it will highlight which scenes work and which scenes don't. Uh, you know, it and to be honest with you, it really isn't a crime to make further changes to your script based on your findings during the storyboarding phase. Uh, if you have the time to fix it, well, you know, might be a good idea to actually do it. Right, so moving on, we have creating the concept art of all characters, environments, and etc. Now, it says all characters and environments. It depends. It just is more about the ones that you need for the you know for the body of work that you're going to do before you take another break uh so you separate it in, in pieces and you know you choose okay which section i'm going to work on and for that section i'm going to do the concept art uh, i need concept art for this and this and that and that then we can finally move to the actually the biggest chunk of it so the pre-production it might seem like it's short but it's not really it actually takes a while it's only it only has two sub points but it's actually quite a bit of work Production, though, that's the biggest one, and that's where we finally move on to penciling and layout. So the penciling and layout, um, this again, it depends, okay? So for me, I pretty much do it as a layout. Penciling, that's more like for someone that's really a specialist in it and really does all the drawings in detail. My real details, they don't come into play uh, once I do the inking, which is the next stage. Um, you know, for this, the inking, uh, this is the stage where I really get to establish the exact lines uh, that, you know, will be showing my world and the characters. And the inking phase is also where all the visual details are and the light and the, you know, it, it's an extremely important uh, stage. Uh, and it requires a lot of skill. Uh, so moving on, you've got the coloring. Uh, and I divided the coloring in two parts. I say part one, which is flatting, and part two, which we'll see in a, in a second. The flatting part uh, is um, extremely easy. Anyone can do it, uh, really. And when I say anyone, I really mean anyone. It's not a difficult job, um, but it's an extremely important uh, process. And I have a couple of videos on my YouTube channel about this uh, because I really do find this important. Uh, then the, moving on, you finally get to the rendering aspect of, of, of the coloring part, uh, which is my favorite part of coloring. Like all colorists, really, this is what they really like. Um, this is where you finally get to add all the cool little details, the lighting, the shadows, the, you know, all the effects that really bring your page to life. Okay, for me, colors are extremely important because colors, really, they provide this emotion that you can maybe not get uh, from only black and white. Sometimes, yes, but sometimes, you know, uh, that, you know, adding colors really makes a world of a difference for the project. Then moving on, you've got lettering. Lettering is unbelievably important, uh, even for me. I'm not an expert at it, but you know I definitely pay attention to, uh, to to lettering. The way you put the letters onto the screen, the way you highlight certain words, the way you can, for example, move certain letters up, certain down. You know, it, it kind of translates to uh, an emotional state that the character is trying to get across. So this is also extremely important. Lettering cannot be underestimated, just like coloring, just like inking, penciling, they're all extremely important. And uh, someone that's really good at lettering will really bring that page uh, up to, you know, up to really good quality. Right, so once you finally have all of this done, okay, then you can finally move on to the distribution side of things. Uh, and there, there's another few couple of very important parts to start choosing. Like the distribution part is all about choosing the right distribution platform first and foremost. Are you going to go self-publishing? Are you going to uh, go through traditional publishing? Are you going to go for a webcomic? Are you going to go for a printed comic book? You know, all of these things are extremely important. And these are the first things you really should be asking yourself before you're actually going to start making this thing. Um, it's all the way at the back of the process, but again... These are things that you have to start asking yourself actually during the conceptual phase. Uh, what am I going to do? Um, right, so with that said, okay, uh, this brings you to marketing. Once you've finally decided that, say for example, you're going to go for a webcomic, 
uh, then you have to think about marketing. Okay, so your social media strategy, for example, uh, how are you going to tackle that? Are you going to upload weekly? And if so, which 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 social media are you going to upload it onto? Or are you just going to show little previews of the bigger picture uh, through Instagram or Twitter or like me? I, I do a lot on YouTube. I show a lot of my stuff on YouTube. You know, kind of finding which strategy works for you. Then. There's also the financial strategy, if if available, obviously, if you're thinking of making money, how are you planning on doing that? Uh, are you going to use crowdfunding, for example, uh, as mentioned? Uh, or are you going to go for something like Patreon? Are you planning or hoping to go through a platform like Webtoons, which, you know, uh, you could also make money on, funny enough, if you become one of their featured um you know, uh, content creators. There's many different ways of doing this. And then there's obviously the convention side of things. You know, uh, if you have comic book conventions near you and you have a, a means of getting there, are you going to do that? Do you have money to get yourself a table and some, you know, some space to show your work? Uh, and then merchandising. That's also, you know, so the distribution and marketing side of things, you can kind of look at it as if it's the business side of things. So you've done all the creativity, you've done all that stuff. Now it's time to do the business side of things. And even though it's only one section at the end of it, believe me, it takes up so much time to do this. Doing the research that I've had to do just to, you know, just to find out a couple things or just to discover a bit more about it. Like I said, this is, this is as you know, this practically is a job upon itself. Um, and within production, it's similar. You know, uh, penciling, inking, coloring, lettering, these are four different, like, you know, professions. You've got the person that does the pencils, one that does the inking, one that does the colors, and one that does the letters. You know, uh, often the storyboards are done by the guy that does the penciling as well. Sometimes you've got just the general artist that does all that stuff in, in one go, like in, in, in my case. Uh, but then, for example, the conceptual phase and the development phase, that's all done by someone that's writing. So in my case, I'm also doing the writing. So as you can see, when you are making comics, um, it is extremely complicated. It's not just one thing or the other. There is so much that comes into play. All right, everyone. So that was it. These uh, are basically the five stages uh, of the creation process into making comics. Uh, as you can see, it's quite a long process, and that's why for the next five episodes, I've decided to divide them and tackle every individual aspect of them one at a time. So for the next episode, we're going to be focusing on the conceptual stage where we look at how I come up with the ideas, how I receive the ideas, where I can get them, and how to structure them into um, the foundation before we move on to creating a story. All right, thank you guys for stopping by. Hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon.